In the city, men and women and children live with their elbows in each other's sides, their breaths hot on each other's necks. But even so, there are islands. Islands as lonely as Elba. Or Juan Fernandez, where the original Robinson Crusoe spoke to his goats and felt his mind slipping quietly into the sea. And islands have always been prisons. St. Helena, Devil's Island, Alcatraz, Chateau d'If. Islands have always been prisons. This is the story of Lorraine Kirschwood, 24 years old, who was a prisoner on the island and who had forgotten why. Lamb for lunch. I got you an outside piece. There's mint jelly in the paper cup. Have a nice lunch. Lorraine Kirschwood has been a prisoner on this island for 10 years. At first, of course, she didn't know why. And later they told her, because that was the sensible thing to do. But now she no longer remembered. The why no longer mattered. It was gone, blotted out, shoved upstairs into the attic hidden on the top shelf of the hall closet. For in the mind of every prisoner on every island, there is a time when there is only one thought pressing on the brain like an expanding clot of blood. Escape. Taking the bus around the long way, my legs are killing me. What time have you got, honey? It's about 12. Oh, I'm late already. Hey, where are you going? I'm leaving. You mean you quit? Yes, I got another job over there. Well, listen, honey, is it uh, all right with them? I mean about... Yes, that's all right. I'm all over there. It's all right. Oh, that's wonderful. Look, I'm late already. Now, you got my number. You call me, okay? All right. I will. And still, there is no island, no prison, of which it can be said from here there is no escape.
with every step away, the island fades from memory. For who would remember a prison with a new world waiting ahead? Cushwood, 24 years old, white, 5 foot 5, 110 pounds, blonde hair, brown eyes. Oh, come in, Adam. Uh, Dr. Sorenstein, this is Detective Adam Flint and do do? Detective Frank Arcaro. Hi, Doc. I do. Frank, would you call up and get a preliminary on the printer? May we use your phone? Help yourself. Missing since noon. What date? Today. Today? Well, Mike, it's only by 3 o'clock now. Call. The health department is sending a man in. In the meantime, we go ahead. She's a carrier, like typhoid Mary, only it isn't typhoid. She's a host to a particular virus. Well, it isn't really a virus, but that's close enough. The point is, she's not herself affected by it, but she can infect others. Well, what is the disease, Doctor? It's practically unknown in New York. Van Norton Sawyer's fever. It's endemic in a hundred mile area in New Guinea around the McNaughton Falls. I'd say there haven't been more than 12 cases reported outside that area. New Guinea? Her parents were medical missionaries. They came here when she was 14. They died here at the hospital. Did they die of the same disease? Then after that, we were able to identify the girl as the carrier. What's your code, Mike? Missing person. Put a warning on it, infectious disease. Doctor, are you sure she left the island? One of the housekeeping staff met her on the bridge. Well, does she have any family in the city? Friends or anything like that? Well, she's lived here on the island since she was 14. Dr. Kalner took care of her under a court order. Well, do you think maybe she would be trying to contact him? He's dead. Hart. Uh, 1960, I think, or 61. You say she's been confined here since she was 14. Oh, no, not confined. We couldn't do that. She's dangerous, isn't she? But there's no legal basis for restraining her. We've had to handle this voluntarily. How did you manage that? Well, she's nominally on the hospital staff. She works in the library. That way, we've been able to control the environment and minimize the chance of infection. She knows what she's got. And since that time, she's never been back across to the city? A few times, some years ago. We took her to New York Medical for a demonstration lecture. Was she the demonstration? How dangerous is it? 70%. 70% what? Fatal. That is, once it's contracted. As far as we can tell, about two out of every hundred people are susceptible. We'd like to find her as quickly as possible before she makes too many contacts.
Yes, about 12 o'clock. Come on. Yeah, I think so. And she came across on the bridge? Well, I didn't see where she came from. But you did notice her? If it's the same one, I did. You see, she asked me uh, which way was west. Well, she was standing right there at the East River, so I said, honey, if you go any further east, you, you'll get your feet wet. <laughs> well, did she say anything else? Did she ask you any other directions? Yes. She asked which way was the zoo. The zoo? Yeah, I told her where Central Park was, told her she could take a bus across town. Said she had a lot of things to see along the way. Well, did you happen to notice which way she was headed? Up the street. You see, I had the children to take care of. I said to her, I said, now you'll get your feet wet. Thank you very you much. Thank you. your kids, see? For a quarter. It's worth a quarter. I took lots of grown-ups in. I'd love to. Okay. Okay, come on. What's the matter? You want me to take you in or not? You don't have to be scared. They're all baby animals. taken a lot of people in there. What do you want to know for? Oh, I'm looking for somebody, a girl. You mean a kid? No, a, a lady about 24 years old. She, she was carrying a suitcase. Oh, her. Did you see her? Did you take her inside the children's zoo? Sure, why not? Well, where is she now? How should I know? She took off. How long ago? Maybe half an hour. You a cop? Yeah. What'd she do? Look, which way did she go? I don't know. She got a quarter's worth. I had to drag her away from those dopey lamps. 
Drag her? Did you actually touch her? Sure, she hung on to me like a little kid. Son, is there anybody home at your house now? My mother. Why? Well, I want to go home with you and explain something to your mother. What? That lady you touched. Yeah? What's the matter with her? I mean, she was kind of a kook or something. She wanted to buy me a balloon. I mean, a balloon. I'm eight years old. Doctor says he's fine, Mrs. Denahan. You can take him home now. Adam. Frank, can you have a car take the Denahans home? I'll take care of it. Anything? No, we covered everything in the radius of 20 blocks east of 5th Street. No sign of her anywhere. This is Saul Chapel from the health department and Dr. Sorenstein. We met. How do you do? Doctor, we don't have much on Van Norton Sawyers. I looked it up. The last reported case was the girl's parents. You know more about that than we do. I brought the record. I understand susceptibility runs around two per hundred. It seems to be linked to one of the rare subgroupings in blood type. I have it here. O, RH negative, M subgrouping. No, I'll need it in writing. Also, I want a detailed description of the symptoms for differential diagnosis. I'll get the information circulated to all the hospitals in the area. Mr. Chaplin, when we do find her, what's the situation? I mean, the legal basis. There isn't any. For example, well, there are at least a dozen known typhoid carriers that we keep track of. All we can do is see to it that they don't get jobs as food handlers. We usually work this backwards. For example, a sailor will come off a freighter from the Middle East with a touch of bubonic or smallpox. He ends up in the hospital and we backtrack it from there. This is a little different. Sooner or later, we'll get a lead. Oh, sure. When the first case shows up, uh, Doctor? Mike, it's a dead horse. There are buses on Fifth Avenue and Madison Avenue, subway on Lexington. She could be anywhere by now, from East Bronx to Sheepshead Bay. We'll get a lead sooner or later. You want to wait for that? Well, what do you suggest? Look at it from the other side. This kid has never been in the city before. She's never been on her own before. Now, supposing she wasn't a carrier, supposing she was just some helpless child, lost, where would you start? Well, uh, where would I go if I were a horse? There must have been somebody at the hospital she spoke to, maybe a friend. Well, you always say people don't run away from something, they run to something. Maybe I can find out what. Okay, two hours, but come right back. Mm-hmm, yeah. What about method of infection? Airborne, waste, skin contact, do you have any ideas? We're not sure. Any close proximity. In 98 cases out of 100, there's no danger, but... Well, it's just chance how many susceptibles she comes in contact with. Sure. She used to ask how it felt to ride on a bus and that. Funny, a bus. And, and then I'd tell her about, oh, going to a dance with a man and everything. Well, she was real sensitive. Well, she never asked any embarrassing questions or anything. She just seemed interested. Well, and once she started to cry. Why? Well, I don't know, like any girl would under the circumstances. I was showing her how to dance. You danced with her? Well, from across the room, sort of. She was real graceful. Did she uh, ever talk about leaving the hospital? Well, in the last couple of weeks. She said the doctors told her it might be all right for her to leave. I thought it was like arrested TB, wasn't it? No. Poor kid. I mean, she wouldn't take a chance to hurt anybody on purpose. 
I mean, she'd cut off her right arm before she'd hurt anybody. Thank you very much. Look, you'll have to tell Miss McNary on the fourth floor that if she wants 36 sheets, she's got to put it on the requisition. Maybe you were Eleanor. Are you Eleanor Holder? No. I'm sorry. Well, I guess I've been stood up. She was supposed to meet me here. I'm sorry. Are you waiting for somebody, too? I thought maybe you were stood up, too. You looked like you were waiting for somebody. It's the music. Yeah, it's great. Listen, would you, uh, would you like to go in, uh, just for kicks? I mean, she's not going to show I could take you in. No, I don't know. You can't get in without an escort, you know. Look, we're, we've both been stood up. I thought maybe we shouldn't waste the whole Friday evening. Would, would you like to go in? I bet you're a good dancer. They have a great band. Huh? Would you like to go in? Well, maybe I, just to see what it's like. Okay. I mean, I wouldn't have come up to you like that, except I thought you were Eleanor Holder. My name's Phil, what's yours? <laughs> Where did you pick up that pig? On the street. You look like she just got off the bus from Peoria or something. Boy, you must be getting desperate, Philly. She's got a face like a lily. You gonna look at her face? Hey, uh... Give me the loan of your key, will you? Yeah, you haven't even danced with her yet. Listen, buddy boy, I can pick them. She even had a suitcase with her. Come on, give me the key. Oh, come on, you got a room at the hotel. I got locked out this morning. Come on, the key. Thanks, my pal, my buddy boy. Do the same for you someday, kid. So long, lover. You gotta spend tonight somewhere, don't you? Well, I was going to go to a hotel. Now, what do you want to pay $15 for? It's only a couple of blocks away. You can have your own apartment for nothing. No, I don't want to put you out. Well, it's nothing to me. I'm just trying to do you a favor. Look, I'll walk you over there, then I'll go back to my own hotel. We had a good time dancing, didn't we? I just want to return a favor, that's all. Come on. Don't be so serious. on the third floor, part, uh, B, C, uh, I'll show you, I know which one it is. Come on, I'll take you out.
Well, there you are. Not bad, huh? Sit down, make yourself at home. You gotta have something to drink around here somewhere. Ah. That's more like it. How do you like it, on the rocks? I thought you... I think maybe I better go. The lights, a couple of glasses, we'll be all set. Hey! Where are you going? I don't want to stay. Please, please, I don't, I don't want to stay. Ah, come on. Found you this place, didn't I? Walked you all the way over here, didn't I? Carried your bag up three flights, didn't I? Thought we'd have a couple of drinks just for fun, all right? <laughs> What's the matter? Aren't you grateful? What's the matter? Somebody hurt? It's all right. She just fell, that's all. There's uh, nothing to worry about. Are you all right, miss? Are you hurt? <laughs> Can you stand up? Sit down. Can you make it? Come on in. Sit down a minute. Just take it easy. Sit down. I'm sorry. Well, what happened? Oh, I don't know, really. Well, who was that man? Oh, he said that was his friend's room and he took me up. You should call the police. No. No, I don't want to do that. Oh, I think I may be sick. Well, you put your head down between your knees. Go on. My suitcase. What? My suitcase. I left it up there, so would you mind getting it for me? Now here, take some water. I don't think that I can go back up there again. It's on the third floor. Well, you'll be all right in a while. Would you mind, please? It has all my things in it. Would you mind? Well, the soup will be back in an hour. He'll get it for Yes, but you. I don't want to leave it there for an hour. I, I, I don't go out much. It's just on the third floor. I don't go out much. It just take a minute. It's right in the middle of the floor. It's blue, plastic, like, like leather. I, I would be very grateful. I'll try.
hadn't been out of the room in two weeks. I'm sorry. I didn't understand. Well, why should you? Why should you have any reason to think that a guy like me just can't get out of his room? Uh, I'll go up and get it. I don't think he'll look, be there now. Oh, no, look, it's all right. I'm all right. You don't have to be scared. It's a fairly common thing. I looked it up in a medical book. It all started on the way to school. I'm at NYU. You know? That is, I was until I couldn't go anymore. And then it got worse. Are you alone? I mean, uh, here. Yeah. I manage. <laughs> I manage fine. You know, I used to walk 15 blocks so I wouldn't have to take the subway. <laughs> then I switched my classes around so I wouldn't have to go in the elevator. Then I'd hang around till just before the lecture started so I could get the last seat by the door. Then I'd arrange to have them send up my groceries and my cleaning and everything. <laughs> Would you believe you could, you could stay in a room this size 24 hours a day seven days a week, and manage perfectly? I've read about problems like that, case histories. What are you, a social worker? No. No, uh, I'm a library. Uh, there are all ways that you could get help. Psychiatrist. I, uh, I haven't got that kind of money. Well, there are a clinic. There's a clinic at, at well, all the hospitals have clinics. Now, they have s sliding scale fees. Now, you could go there. Oh, I did. Only, I'm not urgent. Urgent is when you try to kill somebody or commit suicide. Otherwise, you're on the waiting list. <laughs> you know how long I've been on the waiting list? Three months. And you want to know something funny? I got a letter the other day to come down for an appointment. <laughs> it's too late. I can't get out of the room. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't understand. It must be terrible for you. Hey, do you want to use the phone? You should call your folks. Well, I don't have any family. Uh, I just came to the city today. Well, where are you staying? I'll find a place. <laughs> I better get my suitcase. Uh, I'm sorry. I don't mind, really. I'm, I'm all right now. Hey. You're still shaky. You better sit down. Take it easy for a while. Yeah, all right. Now listen. There's another room here. I've got my typewriter and a couch in there. You could stay there to get some rest. Just for tonight. I have to do something for you. I mean, I can't go... Look. Don't say no right away. Let me show you. All right? The couch is all made up with clean sheets. My cousin was supposed to stay here last night. But uh, it'll be okay. There's a barrel bolt in the door. Hello? Where are you? Hello?
I went upstairs to get my suitcase. Actually, it's wild luck. Five days, and this is the first one. Have you been typed? You mean blood? No, not yet. Well, don't get too close. We have the characteristic edema and flocculation, eventually coma. He's Philip Carshow. His last address is a hotel off Times Square. Can I talk to him? Doctor? Can I talk to him? Oh, it's all right. I'll tell you when to stop. Not too close, please. Mr. Karshow? Mr. Karshow, I'm a police officer. I'd like to ask you a few questions. What for? Listen, I'm sick. Leave me alone, will you? You remember coming in contact with a girl named Lorraine Kirschwood, about 24 years old, brown hair, brown eyes? I don't know anybody like that. She was wearing a trench coat, carrying a suitcase. You must have seen her in the past five days. I, I, I don't know any girl. I never saw any girl. Listen, can I have some water? I gotta have some water. Mr. Kershaw, I'd like you to try to remember. Look, I didn't see no girl. She says so. She's lying. Whatever she says, she's lying. It's just her word against mine anyway. Then you did see her. You do remember her. Listen, my fault. If somebody comes around asking for it, you ask anybody. Where did you see her last? I do it every time. I put you on. You spend money on him. <laughs> Big deal in the dance hall. And Fake out. What dance hall? Where? What happened? Listen. That guy, that guy knows what's going on. She asked for it. Cut it short, please. Now listen, we've got to find that girl. Do you understand? We're looking for her. She's a carrier. She can make people sick. She gives to me? You mean she... You mean that's... That's what I... We've got to find her before she can infect anyone else. Do you understand? That's all we care about now. Oh, that pig. That dirty pig. Where did you see her last? <laughs> Freddy's. He gave me the key. Freddy who? What you want to do that to me for? Freddy who? Now that's enough. Uh, Freddy who? I don't take the responsibility. Who shot? Freddy who shot? Where does he live? Uh, no more. Where does he live? I'm sorry, no more. Ushant. Freddy Ushant. Can you find him? If he hangs out around the Times Square area, maybe. He's in coma. How long? About 48 hours. No more. I picked up your laundry, and the man said your cleaning wouldn't be ready until Monday. It was nice out. I got these flowers on a wagon on Amsterdam Avenue. You know, I didn't know that they still had horses pulling wagons. <laughs> Looks so funny. You know, a, a, a horse pulling a wagon standing right next to a shiny new car. Laurie? Hey, do you have anything with a, a narrower neck? I want to talk to you, Laurie. Laurie, please let me say something. I got a letter from the clinic. They made an appointment for me on Thursday at 1.50. Oh, 
Are you going? Well, that's what I want to talk to you about. I, I think I should try. But I think you should. Now, it's been five days since you came, and I think we should analyze our relationship. I don't know what that's got to do with... No, look, please, don't interrupt me. I realize I have very severe problems. That's certainly obvious. I've tried to be very objective about it, and I feel that you've been a motivation. Do you understand? I don't know. I'm very aware that you're a girl, and a very pretty girl. And I'm in no position to meet you on the basis of a mutual... I mean, un until I do something about myself. Do you see? Helen, I think I should put these in water. I, I don't want them to die. But I have a reason now. Please, Alan, I don't want them to die. Lori, if I could go, and if I wanted it very much, I'm, sh I'm sure they could help me. I mean, I wouldn't ask any commitment from you until I could be sure about myself. Although, actually, when I look at it objectively to analyze our relationship, if I had any right to, I know what I would say, because that's the way I feel. I'm just talking, I guess, because I'm embarrassed. And, and if I gave you a chance to say anything, well, you'd, you'd tell me, oh, Lori, I love you. I love you. No. Lori. Uh, no. What's the matter? No. No. What's no. no. Lori. What's wrong with you? Lori. Police officer, they asked me to find you. They've been very worried about you. Look, I'm going to have a car here in just a minute. Let me drive you back. You're a policeman? Yes, that's right. You were reported missing. What are you going to do now, arrest me? No, I'm not going to arrest you. You can't. I haven't done anything, have I? I mean, I haven't committed any crime. I've not broken any law. No, you haven't committed any crime. But that's not the question. You want me to go back to the island? Yes. We can go back there, and you can discuss the situation with Why? Me. Why should I? You can't make me. You cannot arrest me. Miss Kirschwood, look, you're upset. Let me take you home, and then you'll feel better. Hope. Hope. You have to be fair to other people. Why? Why should I care? Why should I go back? Look, I, I just want to help you, that's all. Will you please come back? With no, me? no. 
Why can't I be free? It's been 10 years. Do I have to be in prison for the rest of life? Why can't I be free just like anybody else? Why can't I live just like anybody else? That's all, just like anybody else. I'm sorry, I, you can't do that. There's a man in the Metropolitan Hospital right now with Van Norton Sawyers. He probably won't live. I'm sure you wouldn't do that knowingly. But the doctor said that I was all right, that it was gone. Says I was clean and safe. Didn't they say that? No, they didn't. Is there anybody else? I mean, are there any other people? No, not yet. Not so far as we know. You see, I found the records about a month ago. I'm, I'm a librarian. I work in the library. I found them. My mother and my father, the record said I killed them. That they died because of me. You see, that's why I asked the doctors. And they said that that was a mistake. That it was not true. That I was all right, that I was just like anybody else, and that I could go. They didn't say that, did they? Is it true? Is it real? You, you better not. Lori. Helen. I didn't know. I wouldn't do anything to hurt you. Not if I knew. Are you all right? So you better take him to the hospital right away. You'll be all right. You'll be all right. Couldn't happen again. Not again. I am all right, Laurie. I came out to find you. I'll be all right. They said I can come back any time. Just proof I can't get it. Lori, I'll come back. I know. Alan, you have to go. Listen, I have to go to the clinic tomorrow. It's over on 2nd Street. I can come over here later. I can come over the bridge. gives you a beautiful view of the city. And there is a bridge. Goodbye. There are eight million stories in the naked city. This has been one. Screen Gems film presentation, Herbert B. Leonard, executive producer.